Hello everyone, my name is Alex and today's video I'm going to be showing you guys how to set up a UI in Unreal Engine. Um, so this is actually going to be a couple different parts. Um, I originally was going to show you guys how to also interact with the UI in this video, but I decided to put that aside for another video. So if you guys want to see that video, go ahead and subscribe. And if you guys appreciate this video and want to see more like it, uh, consider liking, commenting, anything like that. Um, so we're going to go over the UI. I want to do just kind of a, an overview of the overall of uh, all the UI, um, so that way you guys can kind of get a general idea for how the UI works. Um, especially because that kind of threw me off my first time as well. Um, so we'll go ahead, uh, we'll go and jump in right now and have a look at the UI right now. All right, so before we jump in, um, there's a, we're first going to want to actually create the uh, UI that we want. Um, so we're actually going to go ahead and add new. And actually, let me go ahead and throw this in a folder because there's actually going to be a few different parts that we want for the user interface. Um, so I'll just label it UI. Um, and the reason being is that when you're in VR, it's, you typically don't want your UI attached to the headset itself. Um, typically it's going to be something in the physical world. Uh, for this reason, um, you usually want the UI itself to be its own separate entity. And then uh, later on you can create an actor that will actually put that in the real world. Um, so it's, it's a two part thing and I'll explain that a little bit more here in a little bit. Um, so we're going to want to uh, create a new, and then down here in user interface, it's called Widget Blueprint. Um, and we'll just call this User Interface. I forgot I can't have spaces. All right. So let's go and open it up. And this will come on my screen. There we go. All right. So here we are. This is the uh, user. This is the basic uh, widget setup. Um, user interface, you know, however you want to refer to it. I usually refer to it as UI because that's essentially what it usually is. Um, so yeah, so this is how it looks. It's a 2D um, area. So you can actually see we have up here in the top right, we have we can switch between our designer and our graph. Designer is, how we, is where we go to actually design it and make it look how we want for it to look. And then uh, graph is where we go to actually uh, set up what we want certain buttons to do, um, if we want maybe um, different text to change, things like that. Um, I'll, I'll go over some things I think would be good to know, um, but you know, again, there's quite a bit to this. Um, so yeah. Um, so let's go ahead and set up something simple. Um, so we'll go ahead and we'll take a button and we'll have to drop it into the canvas panel. And then um, actually I'm going to create a vertical box. So the way that it works, the way that uh, designing widgets in um, Unreal Engine tends to work is most objects can only carry one child of that object. So I can show you what I mean right here. So if we go and grab a text and drop it onto the button, then we can drop one on, no problem. If we take a second, try and attach to the button as well, we can't. We can't attach anything else to the button unless we were to take a vertical, or there's also a horizontal box. If we took some sort of uh, container, dropped it dropped it on here, uh, actually, we'd first have to move it, hold on. Uh, so we can then drop it on here, drop the vertical box on the button, and then we can attach multiple things to the box. So if we want to add in another text, for example, now we can do that. And you can actually see over here, uh, now we can have two text objects here. So it's kind of weird um, if you're not used to this kind of thing. Um, I'm not going to actually put a vertical box here. Um, I just wanted this. I just want one text box on it. Um, so yeah, uh, so we'll go ahead, we'll take this. Uh, let's just go and give it a text. Um, we'll say, press me. So we'll go and set up something quite simple. Um, so once we have that, let's also go ahead and grab, uh, let's see what else we can grab here. Let's grab an image. So there's a lot of different things and I won't go over everything, um, but we can add in things like images and things like that as well. Um, and there should be some default ones um, that you can set. Where is it? Render 
there should be ah there it is uh, brush right here um, so there are, there are usually some default ones you can also take other materials if you want to as well um, but if we actually scroll down there should be some default textures we can use uh, technically all these are usable as well um, I can't find the one I was looking for though um, but yeah you can use like basically any of these so we'll go and grab this one you can actually see it tend to it kind of did this weird scaling thing it's a little bit big, bigger than what we want so let's go ahead and set down to maybe like a hundred by hundred make it a little bit smaller there we go um, so yeah so we can add in like images and stuff like that and what we'll actually do is we'll go ahead and have it so that way it changes the text here um, first we need to have that size to content there we go um, so there you go, you can kind of see, so size to content will automatically make it size um, to whatever it is you want. If you have um, boxes or anything within other boxes and within other boxes, whatever, um, you can actually see, you can actually fill it. So that way you can make it take up whatever available space you have. So if I chose not to fill the content and I set it to a set size, it would automatically fill, the button itself would automatically fill to however much space it had access to. Um, and the same thing with the, uh, with the image, if we want to, we could have that fill as well. Um, you can actually see it, well, it kind of did something a little weird there. I'm not quite sure why it did that. Um, but yeah, so we can kind of change that around. Um, so we'll go ahead and set up something pretty simple. Let's go and rename this button real quick and we'll call, and we'll just say, uh, press me button. And this will be the image to change. To, uh image to change there we go i'll go and compile and save that real quick and if we go ahead and drop down here so down here we have access to all of the events so there may not seem like a really big difference between clicked and pressed um and this is why i wanted to put this in a separate video um so in order to actually set up a vr user interface interactions things like that um, you actually need to use on pressed and on released on clicked will not work um, don't fully understand why don't ask me um, but for whatever reason they've set it up so on click does not work only on press will work um, using um, using widget interaction components because that's how you interact with them um, so widget interaction components have to interact using an on pressed and on released event. Um, you know, typically you won't really need an on released event uh, for a user interface. Usually on pressed is good enough. But in case you ever need it, uh, you have that. It will still detect hovered and unhovered. It's basically just click that won't work. Um, so yeah. So if we go ahead do on pressed, we'll just go ahead and grab the image. And we'll just go ahead and change the brush. Uh, set brush. And we can actually promote to variable. There we go. And there we go. Uh, compile that. And we can actually go down here. So our variable was put right here. And we'll actually go and rename this real quick. We'll just say new image. And there we go. Um, so we can actually go down here and we can actually set up something different. So we'll go ahead and grab something different just so we know that the button is actually being used later on. Um, we use this one. This little brick clay. Let's just say brick clay what? Brick clay new M. Um, so there we go. So now whenever we press this button, it will actually change the... Um, it, it will change the brush which will be the image um, and actually we might want to actually change that scale too or size my bad um, and if we want to we can also add uh, tint we can also change what it draws as uh, we can choose if we want it to tile anything like that so we have quite a few options when going through this um, now, something else that I think uh, is at least interesting to know about um, the the way user interfaces work um, is you can actually take other uh, widgets and throw them within this one. So, for example, if we wanted to create a, another widget, we'll just say um, 
goes in widget. There we go. We can go and open this up, and what I'll actually do is grab a panel. Uh, not a panel. What am I thinking of? Border. Here we go. Um, so if we go and drop a border in here, and we add maybe like a text to it or something. Um, just say I've been dropped in um, another widget. Okay, and let's actually go and change the color of this. There we go. Um, another thing too is if you want to like reposition it, you can add padding and things like that or just center it automatically, which is what I'm going to do. And I'm actually just going to, there we go. So I don't want it too big. Uh, this is just for a demonstration. Uh, so if we type in goes and widget, you can actually see it pops up and we can just drop it in there like that. Uh, and you can also use this too. So for example, if you want to create um, multiple characters or something like that, then you can actually do um, create widget. And then you can then go in and you can create another widget and you can position it. You can put it into uh, other boxes or things like that. So there's quite a bit of stuff you can do with that. Um, just kind of something I think is interesting to know. Um, I'm also, um, so so knowing how to use the, uh, the this little goat, you know, throwing widgets and other widgets, I think is pretty good to know. Um, especially if you do like uh, networking or anything like that. Uh, if you're doing any sort of multiplayer or you want to have like you can keep creating new characters, new characters, new characters, new characters, because um, then you can just you know get however many characters you have and then set up a new widget. It tends to take a little bit of work, but it um, it it definitely looks a little bit nicer and it makes a little bit um, and it's kind of the best way of going about doing that from what I found. Um, so yeah, so that's how that works. Um, so yeah. Um, so that's kind of some of the basics of uh, widgets. I'll probably end up showing a little bit more in the future, and uh, especially when I come back to do uh, interacting with these widgets, um, I'll probably end up going a little bit more over these. Um, but there you go. Um, now, next thing we're going we're going to want to do is we want to actually drop this in the world, because um, right now you can see we can't actually drop either of these in the world. It's you just can't. Um, in this current state, if you want to, you could attach it to like the uh, the display or something like that. But again, uh, when you're doing VR, there are certain cases where that does work, you know, just fine. Um, but in most cases, you don't want to have things attached to the headset itself, um, especially because if you do attach to the headset, it does tend to look a little weird. You still kind of want to uh, probably approach it. By creating it an actor and then attaching it to the headset, um, just because um, there there was a reason for that. If I recall, it's uh, due to the resolution of the headset and and just the way that the displays are set up. Um, if you were to try and attach it to the headset, it would, uh, if I recall, it'll actually show up in like top left corner of like your left side view. You won't even see it in your right view. Uh, it, it tends to look a little weird. I'm sure it's certainly possible if you scaled it really large or whatever, but even still the best way to do it in VR is um, certainly to do it through this method, um, which we can go over. Uh, so we're going to go and create an actor and we'll just go and call it um, widget holder. Okay. So what we're going to want to do is add a component and it's going to be widget. Um, and then this is the widget interaction, which I said I'll go over in a future video. Um, so if we go and drop in widget. Um, and if you want, you can actually set this to default. I typically prefer to have a separate object as the scene root uh, and position the scene root about the bottom middle of the widget. Uh, just because when you go to place in the world, that's what's going to actually be positioned. Um, so. It, rather than trying to uh, mess with it, you know, in the real world, I just find that it's a little bit easier if you kind of treat this as like the base point. Um, so yeah, um, so over here you can see we've got a lot of different options and stuff. Um, the most important one that we need to focus on right now is right here in user interface. Um, so what we're going to want to do is grab widget class and we're going to grab this one. Um, and you can actually see, so if you look at it right now, um, once we have it in the actual scene, 
um, you'll actually see uh, it's not quite positioned, it's kind of positioned in a weird spot and there is actually a reason for this um, and that actually has to do with the draw size. So something you can actually see, um, but you can certainly see later on if you uh, are actually looking at the collisions, um, is that there's actually an invisible box, um, which is where the draw size comes in. Um, so when you develop a widget, um, unless you have, I th if I recall, um, if you have like a, um, not a panel, uh, what is this called, border? Um, if you have like a border or something, it'll automatically set to kind of look at that border. But because we don't have a border or anything, it's just kind of thrown in there. What actually happens is it's showing from about this corner to probably somewhere down here. Um, because what it's doing, actually, we can actually see where it's showing. So it's actually showing a 500 by 500. So it's showing all this chunk from right here to right there. Um, so what, so it's actually centered in its own weird view. Um, but looking at it in this way, it tends to be a little weird. So we can actually scale down our draw size. And oh, I overshot it. Actually, let's get a let's get an accurate thing here. We're actually looking about looks like maybe about 135 ish, about. Um, yeah, it, it's about the same size on both sides. Um, actually, that's not fully accurate, is it? I that might be slightly off. Um, we'll go and just say 180. Uh. And this will probably be about 180 as well, because it's about a it, it's about a square. You can see it's slightly off, um, but it's it's fairly close. Um, so, and then we can actually reposition this up, and I'm actually just gonna shift it over to the right a little bit. Um, and there you go. We can actually see that it is now there, and we can actually take this, and we can now drop this in the world. Um, and you can actually see it's actually doing something kind of weird. What's it doing? All right, so this took me a little while. Um, so what seems to be happening is it seems to be kind of a lighting issue um, that's going on with the widget. Um, uh, I'm actually going to go ahead and actually turn this back up though just because it makes it way too dark. Um, if we actually go ahead and turn this up, you can actually kind of see it gets a little bit brighter again. Um, there's another workaround for something like this as well though. If you go ahead and go into your widget, you can actually go ahead and go down and then right here, tint color actually make it a little bit darker you actually do kind of have to make it quite a bit darker before it actually becomes to look like how it should there we go you can actually see it's starting to take a little bit more form right there there we go and that's starting to look a little bit more like it should um <clears throat> which unfortunately is just a an issue that would be that you'd have with lighting uh there's not much that could be done about something like that unfortunately um UI tends to be a bit of a finicky thing um, in Unreal Engine. I've even had issues where um, I've made changes to UI and it just would not change at all until I closed down Unreal Engine and boot it back up. <clears throat> so you, so messing around with widgets and UI in Unreal Engine can be um, a little bit annoying at times. Um, you do kind of have to get a little bit patient with it. But uh, yeah, so that's that. That's how you make a uh, basic UI and throw it into uh, Unreal Engine, um, get it all ready for VR. Um, next time I'll be showing you guys how to actually interact with this, uh, with this UI. And uh, yeah, so until next time, see ya.